Testing, testing, testing. Hey guys, Rob from Modern Maker Union again. I don't know if you remember where we are, but here we are. Here's the hobby room, which most of you guys have seen. Here's the other room that I've commandeered now. I have half this basement to myself now, which is dedicated to the hobby, which is pretty sweet. Still a little work to do with this closet, but uh, there we go. This is going to be the painting table soon. I got a problem with all the boxes. Yep. And then here is the new big shelf. It's big. It's heavy duty. Each shelf is capable of holding over 2,000 pounds. So I'm pretty sure I'm good. Um, it's pretty deep. So yeah, I can definitely cram a lot more stuff in there. No bolts, no nothing. Pretty cool. So my question is, is what do you guys want to see built next? Cause I'm having a bit of a struggle right now. Actually, the whole point of this video is to just waffle on about a little bit of stuff and then show you a couple of the builds and just talk about them a little bit. The recent ones. I'm kind of leaning towards this Invisible Man just for something fun to do. Completely different. And then, yeah, for those of you that have seen, I got that Batman stash. The garage sale, all seven kits for 25 bucks. All right, so let's move on into the uh, hobby room. Finally got my table and everything cleaned up. What was the other kit right there for those of you that are keen eyed that I was thinking about doing next? Um, now that I got the big shelf, I turned the stash shelf into the shelf of doom, which is getting smaller as we go. And there's another peak. The one that I've been thinking about being on my bench. All right, so we're gonna go over and Look at the kits. Now, uh, this is where I take my photos. As you can tell, that train's pretty big. This sheet of black stuff here is four feet wide. So, there we go. I just thought maybe that uh, I might be able to show you a little bit better, you know, what's going on versus. Uh, how the photos turn out all the time. Can you see all the color variation in there? Make it look like concrete. There's blues, there's grays, there's reds, there's browns. Everything was all modeled underneath and then a thin, thin coat of gray over top. By the way, this is the 135th scale trumpeter B-52 locomotive. Um, the groundwork, you know, it's molded in, right? I didn't want to get too freaking crazy. I didn't have enough time. The tracks came out nice. The tires came out nice. Now... When you're doing German gray, it's tricky. It, to make it not look like a blob, you gotta do a lot of work beforehand. So there was a lot of pre-shading, highlighting, everything, white, different colors, just to make the gray stand out. Dry brushing, a lot of that. This entire model was washed into me a black panel liner and then cleaned up. That's how I got this, the streaking effects that I did. Like, this 
real basic techniques, but I think that it yielded nice results. Uh, the coal was done with NATO black and then dry brushed with a light gray. And then I added uh, black pigment powder. A lot of this was done with, um, well, with the wash and then, um, to me, a weathering set soot. I love that stuff. Worked really well for this. Some pigment powders were added down below. Uh, this model took a long time. This was shelf of doom model. We're kind of talking about shelf of doom models. Um, and then I finally just got to it and did it. The lights, you know, I was trying to go for a blackout effect. Mm, not exactly sure what I think. You know, the detail on this kit is fantastic. And once you get past the first few real ignorant parts of the build, um, I had a lot of fun with it. I'm really happy that I actually picked it up and finished it. You know, adding more coal and soot there. I took it to a show the other couple weekends ago. This is how I displayed it. You can see a little bit of soot build up here and there and coal dust and everything else. And then you zip over into here. Lots of nice streaking. Tried to paint the fire in there so you can see it. You can see it from this angle, but you can't see it from above, which kind of sucks, but it still looks pretty neat. Just done with paint in behind. And then uh, I left the top so it's removable. We want to be able to see everything that's inside. The gauges look really whited out because uh, they've got clear future on them. I did cut open the uh, that box, the firebox, as it did not come, you know, that way. Added a little shovel. And as you go, you can see where the paintwork really started to pay off. This thing was an absolute bear to paint. It took forever. Uh, these parts right here, these things are evil. Nothing sticks. The only thing you can use is epoxy, and they have to connect to these up here. And so made a big mess trying to ensure that they were going to stay there. So I built these armor plates. They're not on part of the kit. So I did actually have to do a modification. Here you can see the wear points and the suspension. All the shiny stuff is done with a graphite pencil. Looks pretty good. nice stains I put a ton of hours into this thing a ton but I think it looks pretty awesome That decal I'm not super happy with, but not much I can do about it. Um, this model here was done with no gloss coats, no nothing. There's no clear, there's no flat, there's no nothing. This is just the original paint, decals straight on. They look good. So it is doable, guys. No, no problems there. You can see all the shading and highlighting just to make it all stand out. Anybody that's painted German gray knows that this is a difficult feat. There she is complete. All right, so the next kit we're gonna talk about is the Gepard, the one I just finished. And you know, if this looks more accurate than any of the photos I just showed you. God damn. Anyways, let's see, no, 
I'll change color again. Anyways, here we are. I'm hoping you can see the fade. Nope. This camera really does not like this color at all. It's unbelievable. Yeah, you know, you gotta display it, you gotta fix the tracks, you know, but. I really love the detail in this kit. I think it's great. Went together like a dream. Now you can really start to see it. It's all there. This paint job took quite a while. But I had fun learning how to make something look clean, yet slightly dirty. You know, from a distance, you can't see it. Only when you get close, and that was the goal. It's a very tight pin line wash. Lots of time for cleanup. I added the antennas. You know, here you can really see the nice fade. These decals were wrong. I was sent the correction and I still got them wrong. So they're still wrong. <laughs> That's my bad. Yeah. Lots of effort went into this one, actually. Doesn't look like much, but it is. So that's the Gepard. Sticking with the German theme is the last one I want to show you guys. And one that I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of because the airbrush gods were with me this day. This is not an easy paint job. And I literally got tendonitis from doing it. My arm still hurts from doing it, and that was a couple of months ago. So this right here. Let's push this back. This is my ME262. Kind of a what if scheme. It's in a night fighter scheme, but um, the night fighters were two seaters. This is one seater. I did this all with no trigger stop on my airbrush. It was just the paint. Everything was going right, except for with that decal. That didn't go right, but that's weathering. Um, I came up with this pattern on my own. There is actually a pattern to it, even though it's <laughs> tricky to make out. There is one. And I closed the whole plane up while I did the paint job and then opened it up after. There's the gun bays. Very fine rivet lines on here. Managed to pick most of them up with the wash. Some dirt. Now this was a heavy modification to remove this to expose all the engine stuff. Um, the engines were sprayed in all clad paints and then washed with Tamiya Black. I'll show you the other modification. This one is fairly easy to do. The kit kind of comes with that, sort of. take a look inside the cockpit I was quite happy with this this kit is built completely out of box by the way it's photo etch the armored glass that was all hand painted no decals no nothing for this one it's all hand painted 
This kit went together very nice. This was the clear version. That's why I got it for so cheap and it posed a lot of problems. If you can get away with not buying the clear version, do that. Inside here, I actually did, you can't see it now, but the fuel tanks and everything are in there. Um, they're all painted the right green and everything. Got to add quite a bit of weight to the front of this thing as much as you can fit in it, really. Um, now you can look inside here. Won't be able to see a whole lot. But there's all the radio equipment, or I think it's radio equipment. It's all painted. Now, the other big modification was I removed the complete underside of the engines so I could show you the whole thing. Wheels are weathered. Everything is washed and cleaned up inside the wheel wells. I think these engines came out awesome. There's another one of the wheel wells, the drop tanks. Yes, there's a couple pieces missing. They broke off last time I took this thing and I still have yet to put them on. This seam line down the middle is supposed to be there, just so you know. And then the whole bottom was painted NATO black and then given the light dry brush of gray. So there you go. Three kind of unique, hard to pull off paint jobs that I'm quite happy with. And uh, yeah, I hope we get to see you next time. I love my Gepard. I hope that shows it to you guys a little bit better. And then this train. What a beast. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that little waffle. <laughs> Whatever. I just figured I'd make a new video here and hopefully you guys can see what these things really look like rather than the photos. Thanks for joining me. Feel free to sign up for Facebook, Model Makers Union as well. Please like, subscribe, tell your friends, do all that good stuff. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.